So today we're going to take a look at an article that says an alien expert says that we're sharing Earth with a new species of human. So we're going to be taking a look at this and saying, is this real? Is this not? What's going on? Could there be any truth to this? As always, we're going to look at this with logic and reason, but also with intuition and an open mind. That's what we're all about here. So let's see what this is all about. I'm going to be reading some excerpts from this article called the alien expert says we're sharing earth with a new species of human uh, by Terry Larch on medium.com. So if you enjoy, excuse me, if you enjoy this article, if you enjoy what we're, you know, some of the excerpts and things that we talk about, go support Terry Larch on medium, go give him a follow, but let's see what this is all about. And, and I'll tell you why I, I, the reason why I wanted to read this with you guys is because I, uh, I, I find a certain aspect of it to be um, interesting. And I think you'll see why, as we continue. So, um, it started off by saying her name, this alien expert, is Alexis Brooks, and she stated that humans are in fact not alone here on Earth. An interview took place between Alexis Brooks and Mary Rodwell, who is an author, UFOologist, and hypnotherapist. Mary mentioned that to date we are sharing our world with a new species of humans. Now, what I think is, is interesting about this is that I believe that we are sharing the earth with a new species of humans, but this is a new species of the mind in that we are uh, coming to an age where a new consciousness is starting to emerge in humanity. It's starting to evolve in humanity, a new way of understanding reality, a new way of seeing things and having an all awareness rather than self-awareness. Humanity is transitioning from self-awareness to all awareness. And uh, I think it's interesting some parallels here, and 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 but we're also going to examine like could there be more to it though? Are are there actually aliens, etc., or not necessarily aliens? She doesn't say aliens. She's an alien expert, but a new species of human. So it says this new species of humans have superior cognitive type abilities as well. Some of the people that go missing each year are believed to be people abducted and used for specific alien experimentations. They have been upgraded, Mary says. It says they have the ability to think and reason way above the curve. The children had a lot more conscious awareness of multidimensional experiences. While their parents were afraid of the experiences relayed by the children, the children spoke naturally of their experiences. See, what's interesting to me about this is to me, this fits in very, very well with all awareness and eventually hyper awareness, which is a highly evolved state of this all awareness. And of course, as we see humanity reaching a, a new level, this ability to think and reason, of course, especially especially when it comes to all awareness, or I'm sorry, hyper awareness, um, you don't necessarily have to have all awareness uh, or, or a higher consciousness. You, def you don't necessarily have to reason. There are some people who can't reason very well, but are still have this new awareness, an all awareness or a higher awareness. Not hyper awareness, not, not a neogenian consciousness of hyper awareness. That's, that's, that does entail reason. Um, but this ability to think and reason way above the curve, very, very interesting. Now, uh, it says the children had a lot more conscious awareness of multidimensional experiences. Um, where their parents were afraid of the experiences, etc. Well, here's the thing. Children are extremely connected to the source and the intuitive domain. And if you have children who are, you know, even more so aware than, let's say, the average child, uh, yeah, I think it's very, very possible that they're going to be having connections to the source domain, to frequency domains, to perhaps, you know, uh, being able to sense things that we can't. Children are highly intuitive. So if you have a child that's you know, even more uh, evolved in, in, in consciousness, mentally speaking, yeah, you're going to have uh, this, this occur. So what I think is very, very interesting about this is, and, and I, I'm going to keep reading, is the parallels between what, what, she, what she seems to perceive as, as being a, a new species that, that uh, it, has to do with like alien abduction or whatever, but rather it seems like she's describing breakthroughs to higher consciousness. And uh, it's interesting that she talks about people being abducted by aliens and then being upgraded or whatever. 
if you take a look at a video that I just recently did about alien abductions, I think it says, I think the video is titled What Alien Abductions Really Are. And we talk about the idea of alien abductions possibly being um, happening in the mental domain rather than the physical with people being tuned in to another dimension where their soul goes to another dimension or it doesn't really go. Our soul is always in the source, but our soul tunes in as 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 eternal minds as a zeta we tune into another domain and dmt is perhaps uh in part a mechanism that helps this tuning process as as we discussed in the research done by dr rick strassman who uh did did, did phenomenal work in dmt research with volunteers who describe situations that are very similar to the alien abduction experience. They find themselves in a, in a waiting room or in like an exam room. There are these entities looking over them and there's usually one who sometimes is a leader and they're sometimes uh, doing experiments or are interested in human, human emotion or, um, you know, d d different uh, accounts that are extremely similar to, and that was one of the speculations of the doctor, Dr. Rick Strassman, in his book was that DMT could be facilitating what people are experiencing as alien abductions. Now, this doesn't mean that they're not real. It just means that they're not physical. It means that they're not happening on a spaceship somewhere. It means it's it's occurring in another domain, another dimension. And it's at the soul level rather than the, the body level. Uh, and, and by the way, I always say this when I mention psychedelics, don't do anything dangerous, don't do anything illegal, and never feel pressured to do these things. So it says here, it says that from her understanding, she believes that there's a new breed of homo sapiens. It seems that younger children are claiming to be aliens as well. Perhaps there are specific reasons for this due to their young age and what their body can withstand from these experimentations. Well, so, so that's another thing that, that fits in is that a child who is very connected to the source domain, who is having intuitions of the frequency domain, of domains beyond matter, the immaterial domain, the source, there are a number of things that could be happening here. One, they could have actually had a past life on another planet. Maybe their previous life was an alien. It's possible. That's very, very possible. Or it could be that they are simply having um, these memories of the frequency domain, of an immaterial domain that seems very alien to a corporeal realm of space and time, a non-local domain of, of frequency and pattern would seem very alien. So I think that this could also be, um, you know, another possibility. Uh, so, uh, so this is interesting. Mary went on to say that syndromes such as Asperger's and ADHD might be the direct result of some kind of genetic ma manipulation. Using highly developed technology, these aliens are able to study and advance more than anything, no, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and, and then she goes on to talk about genetic manipulation, or at least the author goes on to talk about genetic manipulation, um, changing people via their DNA. Um, but this, yeah, you know, the, the interesting thing, okay, like people's uh, Asperger's, ADHD, and, and just those who are, or who are not neurotypical, I don't even like that word, um, but, but because I think it, I, I don't, I don't, I don't like ha having, having something that is considered typical, uh, that, that, that needs a whole, a whole reworking, but let's not get into that. But this idea of, and, and. I think that th this has been actually been an, on my to-do list as an area to study, to study these um, different types of cognitive behaviors, ways of understanding the world, and ways of operating um, that could be tied to different forms of an evolving consciousness. Because I think that humanity is really apt to label things as being a dysfunction 
or a illness when that may not be the case it it it's just like it's it's you know human beings like to label things that are different as being bad and you know we humanity has gotten into a lot of trouble because of that and so some of these ways of understanding reality though they may not be typical may actually be advantageous in other ways um in 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 other in other capacities you know i know that there are some people who are who's who may not be able to understand let's say let's say they can't understand uh sarcasm very well because of of their their brain functioning they're, they're not able to understand let's say sarcasm very well or interpret it very well but they might be phenomenal at mathematics or something like that like they might be geniuses at, at math or something so anyway I'm, I'm going off a little a little off topic um i don't think that you know, ADSD, ADHD, and Asperger's are the result of genetic manipulation of aliens. I, I don't think so. But I, I think it, it would be interesting to look at these things in the frame of a higher, a, a developing consciousness. To, just to see what, you know, it, it's sort of like the idea of people who are labeled as, let's say, schizophrenics today would have probably been been regarded as oracles in ancient times or prophets in ancient times. So the times really reflect how we see these things and understand these things. What may have been seen as a gift in ancient times might be seen as, you know, something very negative in, in modern times. Now, I want to make it very, very clear. I am not a medical doctor. I am not a therapist. None of this is medical advice. Always do what your doctor says. Um, I'm not saying that, uh, okay, so let's say, for example, someone, you know, ha ha has an issue where, um, you know, their dreams are extremely vivid or they're having these, these vivid intuitions that are like borderline schizophrenic or something. Yeah, that might be someone t having a very strong connection to the source, but that doesn't mean that one shouldn't, uh, let's say, get help or take medication. Like, yeah, you absolutely should because that can get out of out of control. So it has to be it has to be this balance where you understand, for example, that you can that you are having this connection, but realize that because of that, you one one would need help. Um, if that gets out of control, let's say, because the source is powerful. So if you have a, you know, a thin veil and you're highly connected to the source, yeah, you might be getting some very interesting information, which, which can be helpful and, and great, but you can get overwhelmed and go into a panic attack and have anxiety and start believing things that aren't true or whatever. So you absolutely need help from your doctor and, um, you know, medication or, or therapy or whatever, whatever you're, your healthcare professionals suggest to be able to work through that. Um, but it's sort of this idea of, uh, we kind we kind of need a synthesis where say in the past, people didn't have any kind of help. They just went full blown into, into their, uh, their visions and whatnot. And then today we kind of have people just dismiss it as, oh, well, you're just, your brain just isn't working right. You're broken. And that's not good either. We need this synthesis where it's like, wow, okay, you have, you have a connection to the source, but this can get overwhelming. So we, we need to help you as well. Like there needs to be, you need, you need therapy, you need medication for if it gets, you know, overwhelming, et cetera, et cetera. That would be my opinion. We need the synthesis where, where people aren't looked at as, 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 oh, you're broken or, um, there's something wrong with you or, um, or, or, oh, you're just crazy. You know, be like, well, what you're tapping into is really archetypal energy. So this thing that you're thinking, like it might not literally be true, but wow, you're ta you're ta you're ta you're tapping into um, an archetype or a pattern. Now, it's important not to take it literally true, but I, I'm just I'm just spitballing giving examples here. Um, 
of the fact that when we are, uh, you know, going into a new world, we need to l- look at things with new eyes and we want to treat people and help people be healthy uh, while, while not just writing people off as broken or flawed. Like we need to look at people as a holistic system that is a, a physical system, a mental system, a spiritual system connected to the source and, and treat it as a real living being. Today, it's not like that. Today, people are treated like, because we live in a materialist world. So everything has this like factory model. People are treated like car, like like uh, changing out car parts. Like we're just machines. Like, oh, there's a problem. Got to switch out that part. You got to have a tune up. You got to, and, and we are physical. So that does happen. We, we do need those part switching out and tune-ups from time to time, but we're also so much more than that. We're a living, breathing human being, and our medical system just needs to be changed completely. You know, like a lot of people have anxiety with going to the doctors, and it's such a, for people who have anxiety going to the doctors, it's such a cold, sterile, frightening, anxiety-inducing experience. And so the, the reason why I'm bringing this up is because as an example of we need to treat people like people. We need to not be like, we need to realize, oh, wow, you know, this is hard for this person. Let's, let's have a comforting environment. Let's have a welcoming environment. Let's have, let's, let's not make it this cold, sterile, scary sort of experience. Let's, and that's just one example of treating a person like a real being, a real living, breathing being, and not just like a factory. Oh, get them in, cut them open, switch out this part, kick them out. You know, uh, yeah, it's, it's, that's just one example. Uh, we, we need a healthcare system that acknowledges people as people and not just as bodies, but as living beings, the subjectivities that have feelings and, and emotions and thoughts and anxieties and fears and joys and all, all sorts of things. So we absolutely need that. Um, but I just want to, I want to be clear 100%, okay, because I'm I'm kind of rambling, going off topic. Um, I'm not including, you know, all my thoughts on the subject. So I just want to be crystal clear. Okay, I'm not a doctor. I'm not giving medical advice. Always do what your doctor or your health healthcare professional says. Always take, you know, this the med- medicine they suggest, etc. Be very safe. Be very healthy. Okay. I'm I'm um, talking in a. I'm kind of going off topic here, talking about how I believe that we should approach. Um, caring for people in a new world and acknowledging people uh, having unique frames of mind rather than being, oh, you're just broken and you need to be fixed. I don't like that. There are times when, hey, if you got a broken arm, yeah, you, you, hey, you got a broken arm, you need to be fixed. But this idea of like, you know, cer- certain ways of, of, you know, especially like a lot of conservative values, like, oh, like the... the you know, you you like people who are the same sex. Oh, you're broken. You need to be fixed. Or you like people who blah, blah, blah. You know, this, that's just another version of this. It's just, obviously, we're, we're getting to an age where, well, I was going to say we we realize that that's ridiculous, but that's not true. There's a there's a ton of people out there who, um, a lot of, well, well, well for, never mind there. Never mind. We, we live in a very backwards world. We live in a very horrible world. So, I'm getting. Let's go back. Let's go back to the topic. Um, but but interesting. No, I, I I find the topic interesting. So uh, it says, how far our existence traces back are merely theories. Blah blah blah. Um, and and it and it ends by saying our world will be a new one, layered with a new breed of human beings. Perhaps perhaps even with technology being a part of them, certainly it will be a brave new world for all, completely different than what we know now. Um, humans remain greedy and violent. Maybe on the future Earth, it will be a much more peaceful one. And I agree with this. See, so he, so when I when I look at a thing like this, and I and I and I see an individual going, oh wow, look at people, their consciousness is changing. Uh, people are beginning to realize they're connected to something bigger. Uh, I don't think this is because of alien abduction or aliens messing with DNA, creating a new breed of species or human. Um, I believe that this is a new consciousness that is emerging. And 
I don't know much about this person. There is, how long is this? There is a, an hour interview with this person, okay? There's an hour interview with this person. Uh, here, I'll show you. I'll bring it up on screen that you can go watch if you'd like. Um, it's called, what, what is the new human and they are here to change? The fall? Who is the new human and they are here to change? Uh, let me let me refresh this because it, it, it said the title. Ah, here. See, look. Who is the new human and they're here to change the world? Okay, you, so go watch this if you want. I haven't watched it. And I don't like to comment on things too much if I haven't researched it a lot. And I, I you know, to be fair, I haven't looked at any of this person's work. But I'm just reading, uh, you know, bits and pieces of, of this article here. So I'm just basing on what I'm reading from uh, this article here. But is there a new species of human? And are they here to change the world? Yeah. A new species of consciousness, you know, not physical, having nothing to do with physicality. And anyone can become this. It's just a raising of of consciousness. Um, I and and I mean that's what he, what we're here to do. We're here to. Um, so, okay, look if if there's a new breed of human and they're here to change the world. I mean, we're all aliens in here. All all neogenians then are are aliens because we are of this higher consciousness and we are here to change the world. I'm I'm kidding. I, well, no, I mean I mean I'm not I'm not kidding. We are of a higher consciousness and here to change the world. But when I say we're all aliens. Just to be clear, I'm 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 being uh, tongue in cheek about it. Um, pot? Is it possible that we that some of us incarnated from other planets? Is it possible? Hey, that's possible. It is possible. I did a whole video on that, but we can't know that that's true for certain. So we shouldn't uh, go proclaiming that as though it were truth or anything like that. We can speculate and think, oh, it's an interesting possibility, perhaps. But. Um, and, and, and I think judging from this article, she's saying things like she's, uh, had people who had an alien abduction experience. And after the experience, they seem to be like, oh, they're smarter and they have a more awareness or whatever. Well, I mean, this would make sense too, because if abduction experiences are facilitated by DMT, which it seems like that they are, if you, if you, if you don't know why watch my video called what are what alien abductions really are. It seems to be facilitated by DMT. And if it's true, yeah, it's a life-changing experience. It You understand truths of reality. You understand. So yeah, you're going to come back from it completely changed. So a couple different things here. Um, are are there, is there a new, did aliens manipulate our, our DNA? And is there a new breed of humans walking among us right now? Uh, I don't think so. Is it possible? Yeah, it's possible. Mm, you know, it's possible. We, there, there's a lot of things that are possible. I don't think so. I don't think that's the case. It could be. And if I'm wrong, like, uh, you know, I'll, I, I, I don't really, the thing is, I don't really care. Like if, if the thing I care, like I say this a lot, the thing, I care about changing the world. So I like when they end it, when, when they say, okay, so our new, our world will be a new one, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so, so that's kind of my point too, is I don't care. I don't care if you're an alien. I don't care if your DNA was manipulated genetically. I don't care if you're an incarnation of ascended master. I don't care if you're a bodhisattva. I don't let's, let's change the world. That's all. That's always my, my position. So just, uh, you know, re reading this and looking at this, it, it seems to me that this person is noticing the phenomena, the phenomenon of an emerging new higher consciousness of all awareness rather than simple self-awareness. And they are interpreting that as it being because of genetic manipulation of aliens or an alien abduction experience or what have you that that's my perception perception of what's going on here um i think that what and the reason why i wanted to look at it is i thought oh this is interesting what this person is this person is like oh there's a new species of human here and it's kind of like yeah it's it, it's us it's it's yeah hi we're here it's not because we're abducted by aliens. 
It's because we understand what we are, where we are, and why we are here. We understand that we are otherworldly beings. We have this knowledge within ourselves. We understand that we're eternal Zetic minds, that we're Zetas, eternal beings of frequencies, that we're creators and transformers. So we're here to create. We're here to transform. That's what we're here to do. That's our meaning. That's our purpose. That's our priority. That's our obligation. We are creators and transformers. And... It, yeah, that that so so is there? Yeah, hell yes, it's us. We are here. Um, but remember, this doesn't mean that we are, are are literally from another planet. We always have to be grounded in logic and reason. We 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 know that we're eternal minds. We know that we are eternal. We know that we're not just these bodies. Do we know that we came from another planet? Nah, we don't know. We might have intuitions. We might have memories, but we don't know for sure if those are true or not. The human hardware is not very well developed, and so everyone is a little crazy, and we always have to be grounded in logic and reason. So, um, regardless of anything, we are here to change the world, and we want everyone to be on board with changing the world. And you don't have to be abducted by aliens, you don't have to have your DNA manipulated, all you have to do is, guess what? Know thyself. It's been said throughout, through th thousands of years and, and humans don't do it. It's always, you know thyself, look within. Know thyself, you will know the universe and the gods. That's the message. Oh my God, please, for fuck's sake. Like everyone's looking at everyone. Oh, maybe it's God. Maybe it's the aliens. Maybe it's the stars. Maybe it's the cards. May no, just look in the damn mirror, for, please. It's not that hard. But uh, things are changing. A new awareness is beginning to develop. All awareness is beginning to develop in humanity. We want to get humanity not just to all awareness, but hyper-awareness, a very uh, sophist uh, sophisticated, high, highly developed version of a new awareness that understands our place in the universe and as the universe. We are the universe. We are the universe incarnate. We are the universe experiencing itself through these patterns that we have generated for ourselves to be able to experience this world of emotion, sight, and sound, and to have the experience that we're having the, uh, of right now. So let's let's change the world. Let's play this game that we've built for ourselves. Let's stop, let's stop the murder. Let's stop the hate. Let's stop killing each other. Let's play this game of transformation, this game of creation, this game of meaning, this game of purpose, this game of uh, life that we're playing right now. So my friends, I'm going to wrap that one up here. Probably a little different. We didn't talk too much about aliens, I know, but I think that uh, this is important to understand. And if you're seeing this video, this is a members-only video, but I release one members-only video per month. So maybe you see it, maybe you won't. I don't know. But I want to give a shout out to everyone who supports, especially Renaissance Fairy Cassidy, Angela, DB, Enki, Nusalina, Paul Rogers, Eric, Massam, Ryan, and Christopher Smith, and everyone else. Thank you very much.